Hello, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today uh, we'll take a look how to write uh, tests in Clojure, but we'll cover a specific case, and the case is when your function or your piece of code that you're trying to test is doing some external HTTP requests. So we'll take a look what approaches uh, you can use to uh, mock your uh, requests and uh, how to write tests for that cases. So I created a simple application uh, with just one function that we're going to uh, to test in our um, test namespaces. So uh, as I usually use this Pokemon API um, for demonstration purposes, we are using this uh, here again. Uh, so the idea is that we have a function that uh, returns uh, Pokemon AP, uh, information uh, by ID, uh, but we also will do some transformation here. So uh, we, it will make our tests a bit more interesting. Uh, so let's take a look how that works. So if I just execute this function, uh, it will uh, give me information like that. So we have a name, abilities, and forms. Uh, if I remove these two lines uh, and reload this, you'll see more data. Um, how it comes. So you see uh, from the HTTP uh, response we're actually getting uh, abilities and forms in in this format so it's like a vector of maps and then we have some nested data here and nested data for the forms so i just created some simple uh, functions to uh, uh, convert that so we, we have this transform abilities and transform forms um, it basically maps over this data and for the forms it just get name and put it into a final set and for abilities we are looking inside the map uh, ability name path um, so if I return uh, re uh, roll back the change run it again so we, we see this response um, so after that uh, uh, basically this will be our kind of like production usage of this code. We, this is the real API call uh, to the re real service. Uh, but for tests, we want uh, we want to mock that uh, API call and return uh, something instead. So if I go to uh, test namespace here, um, we'll cover a couple approaches that you can take. And the first one uh, will be uh, basically specific for the HTTP client that we use. So in my example, when I'm doing the call, I'm actually using this uh, CLJ HTTP client, which is basically a wrapper on top of Apache HTTP client. Uh, so for the tests, for the first approach, we'll use the library called CLG HTTP fake. Um, and what, what this allow us to do is to uh, create a stub for our request, but basically it's doing it on the uh, closure side. So we, uh, right before we're doing a real HTTP call, we will uh, use the read dev. Uh, so the library in, in internally is using the with read devs, uh, and uh, it read devs the function that uh, actually doing the call. Uh, so in this approach, there is no real HTTP uh, request going to the uh, URL. Uh, instead, we're just mocking on the uh, in our code side. So let's take a look uh, how the test is written in this case. So first of all, uh, we have this base URL now that is uh, like a fake API, like a non-existing API URL. And after that, uh, this is our main assertion. If I get this thing here and just show you that it will fail now here, as it says, uh, give me a sec. So it's trying to do a, re a, a real HTTP uh, request to unknown uh, host, and it throws an exception. So this is not working. Uh, what we can do is we use this block, and it adds an uh, extra layer of nesting. But inside this thing, we can use uh, we can provide a, a map of our request uh, uh, requests uh, stubs. So uh, here it will be the 
uh, URL, uh, which we're trying to um, which we're trying to stop. And then uh, this is the response that we get. And as you see, it will be for the get re uh, request. So in the response, we're just returning some data in the format as we expect it to be from a real a API call. Uh, and this basically returned to our code when we do a request. And then this, this is uh, passing now. So as you see, um, we expect this to be a response and this is a real uh, the execution of our test function with uh, the base URL. So if I change uh, here to some, mm, some other ID, if I run it again, we now have an exception because uh, basically this uh, URL is not matching and um, our test is failing now. Let's go back to Pokemon ID. So that's for uh, 200 response. Uh, same for uh, dif a different uh, response uh, statuses. So if we want, for example, uh, simulate the 404, uh, now when we define our stubs, we say that for this URL, uh, we will return 404. And in that case, we don't care about the um, the message uh, in, in the body. Uh, and here we have this check that if uh, this block uh, will have a status that's not equal to 200, we consider it uh, like an ex unexpected behavior and we just throw an exception with this uh, message that it fails to fetch uh, details by ID. And basically in this assertion, we're just checking that uh, there was an exception thrown with this type and this um, text is matching the exception details. So that's the first simple approach. Um, there are multiple uh, problems with, with the, this approach. The first one is uh, we don't test uh, everything because we're obviously not doing a real HTTP call. And it could be a problem uh, at some point. Um, the, the bigger problem that we have is that we are really uh, coupled with the exact HTTP client that we're using. So in our case, it was Apache HTTP client and uh, the CLJ HTTP library. Um, so you can, you can say that's fine, but actually it uh, will give uh, some problems in if you're using this in production uh, code at some point, uh, especially when you... Uh, will have to update your HTTP client for some reason. So a real-world story about that um, that happened uh, quite recently is that uh, we were using quite a lot a uh, library called um, HTTP Kit, um, and we used the client version of, of that library. Uh, annoyingly, when we started building uh, the monitoring on top of microservices, we wanted uh, open telemetry and we are, we are going to use Datadog uh, and all that stuff. So the final goal was to get uh, distributed tracing. Uh, but this HTTP uh, kit library uh, is not that popular. Um, so it's quite, kind of popular in Clojure uh, community, but not in like wider Java X system. So that's why there are no uh, outer instrumentation available for um, open telemetry uh, and Datadog and all that stuff. So uh, they basically don't know how to instrument your HTTP calls. So uh, if you add Datadog agent or open telemetry agent, it will not instrument your outgoing uh, HTTP calls. And that's why it's not visible in the distributed traces. Uh, so that's fine. Like. We, we can swap the HTTP client uh, and if we're going, for, for example, with uh, going to HTTP, uh, CLJ HTTP, it's using uh, Apache client under the hood and it's supported by most of the tools for the open telemetry. But problem was that a lot of tests were written with this approach with a, a fake, uh, fake HTTP library specific to uh, HTTP kit. And that gave a lot of problems. Uh, how are we going to refactor that? So we had to introduce some uh, intermediate layers of libraries and do the wrappers and all that stuff just to simplify the migration process. 
So just keep that in mind. Um, so at some point, this could, could give some problems if you will have to switch your HTTP client. So moving next, uh, and this is my preferred approach uh, nowadays, is to use a real uh, like a real HTTP call, uh, but use some kind of tool uh, that we can run uh, where we'll register our stubs uh, and it will basically behave as our third party API. And there are multiple tools available. So we, uh, one of the most popular, I believe, in Java world is this Wiremock. But also we have, uh, so yeah, this is the Wiremock uh, documentation. There's also a mock server and Montebank. Uh, so they are all slightly different. But um, most of the time we are just using this Wiremock thing. And um, basically covers uh, a lot of our needs and... Uh, I haven't got any particular issues with that library, uh, with that tool. So yeah, I just recommend using that. So what what is actually um, how this thing works? So you basically have a couple options how you start your Wiremock server. Uh, so you can just run it from the JVM, from your tests, like as an um, embedded uh, thing in Java. Uh, a simple option. The other option is you use Docker and just uh, start your test environment in Docker Compose or just Docker before you run tests. And then you uh, like basically calling some container inside Docker. Uh, and also there is a, a tool called Test Containers. And it basically allows you to um, work with your test environment and start your Docker containers from your code. And you can basically specify Wiremock as a test container and it will start the container before your test and stop it after your test. So yeah, three options. Uh, and we're going to take a look into two of those. So first one is uh, embedded a Wiremock server. Uh, so to do that, uh, we add a couple dependencies. So it will be just this Wiremock thing in uh, depths.edn in test profile. And also for test containers, I'm using this seal, uh, closure wrapper around that. So that's the dependency for that. Uh, by the way, uh, all code will be in, uh, uh, I'll, I'll push the source code to GitHub and I'll post the link in the pinned comment in here in, in YouTube. So just scroll to get the link. Um, so regarding this thing is, um, this is a bit of Java interop to start the Wiremock server. Obviously, potentially you want uh, some random port, like a free port available here and after that, let's just remove this thing um, like that. I want to remove this let from here. So now uh, we uh, we basically opening our try catch, and that's just to have ability to use the finally block to always stop the Wiremock server. Um, it's a bit naive example here because in uh, real tests, most likely you will use some kind of uh, fixture to start your server, then run tests and then stop the server. But for a simple test, this, this works fine. Um, so if we start uh, started the server, now we, we have an option to get the base URL from it. So let's compare like something like that, run it. So as you see, uh, it says that it started on this port. Um, and after that, we need to uh, register our stubs. So to do so, uh, there is a block like this. I'll try to highlight that. And what's going on here is we're creating, a, we're executing a POST request to this endpoint, admin mappings, and then we basically provide the body. And here we have the uh, definition of our stub. So we define request. And request will be this thing. Uh, so it says this is the path with the ID and the response will be this, this thing. So same as we returned from our uh, CLJ HTTP fake stub. And yeah, now we need to provide uh, this header that it's actually JSON. So our HTTP client uh, library will be able to 
recognize that it's JSON and decode it. Um, so yeah, that, that's it. Um, let's run this thing. And you see that the test is passing now. Uh, just to demonstrate that it's actually doing the call, if I change the ID here to something else, and I execute it once again, now we have an exception here. And if we scroll a bit uh, the output, it should tell us that we don't have a, a stub. So it says here that uh, the closest stub is is this one, uh, which uh, um, is this one that we registered with the uh, one, two, three ID, but we actually got this thing, and that's why it's not matching. So it's quite useful to see if you made a mistake uh, in your test or in your code, um, and see how it's not matching the stub that you registered in Wiremock. So this is one of the examples how you can uh, create your stubs in Wiremock. There are different options available. So uh, if you just use JSON, it is basically language agnostic. So if you're able to execute a POST request to register your stub, you, you basically can use it from any language you want. Uh, and it's quite good option for closure, I believe, because working with JSON, it's really easy because it will be basically you define your stub with a closure map, and then you just convert it to JSON string when you create a POST request to register the stub. But if you prefer, there is also an option to use uh, their provided SDK for Java, and in, in that case, you'll be able to use this kind of DSL uh, to create your stubs and register them. So that's up to you. Uh, my preference is usually just plain JSON to define uh, the stubs. So cool, that's, that's it. Um, let's fix that uh, back to a real, a, uh, real ID. Yeah, now it's working. So in the end, we, we're just stopping the server. And the final bit is here, uh, and it is exact same code inside this LED, so nothing changed from the previous example, except that we're now running the Wiremock not embedded in our JVM, but actually inside a Docker container, and we use test containers to manage the start and stop. So to start, um, start a container, we just use this uh, closure wrapper, and we say that image will be this thing, and we want to expose the port uh, 8080. And after that, when the container is started, we can get mapped ports from that and the host, which will be the local host. So if I get this thing and just do a is, let's see what we get. So it, it creates a random port. Uh, because the Docker container will be exposing this port to the host. Um, yeah, so, and after that, exact same thing, so just a POST request to uh, create our stubs, and then our main assertion right here. And now if I run um, watch docker ps, now as you see, we, we have this tool running, which is like an orchestration container from mm, test containers, and now if we're lucky, we'll notice that if I run the test, um, oops, again. yeah, so you see, uh, it spinned uh, really quickly the uh, additional container and inside that, that container, we actually have the Wiremock server. So if I add some th sleep here, we should see it definitely. Yeah, you see, uh, it created the Wiremock instance um, in a Docker container, and it will stop when when we finish the test. Cool. So I think that's it really for for this video. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget that uh, there are options to support my my work by uh, using my uh, links to buy me a coffee or coffee pages link in the description in the pinned comment uh, and also don't forget to subscribe like and uh, comment um, yeah thanks a lot uh, see you in the next video bye